Well guys, <clears throat> I finally escaped China. It was harrowing. Uh, it was really, really harrowing. For those of you that might not know, um, you know, some shit went down in China and um, it was it was it was really by the skin of my teeth at some points. I, I went to the airport in order to go to America. I find found a flight that would that would get me out and um, I gave my passport to the customs individual at uh, Shanghai Pudong Airport. Um, the flight I had I'm in the middle of right now it has bounced me from Seoul to Paris where I'm at now and I'm on my way to Detroit I uh, gave my passport to the customs guy and he looked at it and he opened it up and he looked at my face and when he looked at my face I could tell that he was really looking at the features in my face because you know I must have been on some sort of a list because then he looked at the passport and then looked at my face again and he looked at my passport and I don't know you know uh, how the planets aligned but then he stamped it but it was a really strange way that he stamped it you know it wasn't normal normal stamp sound it was a different sort of stamp sound and then he stamped my little exit card where I write my name where I'm coming from you know, um, I wrote all my information down and then he looked in the computer system where all my information is stored in conjunction with my passport to verify. And uh, he must have made a big mistake because uh, he gave it back to me and, and I, walked, I walked out of the customs area. And I remember walking out and, and I think he must have realized he did something wrong because he turned his head around and he looked at me and I looked at him and I, I did one of these. I did, I do this a lot, I just, and he looked at me and he, he smiled and he smiled at me, but he had already let me go. He had already given me my passport back. So it didn't even matter if there was some sort of warrant out for my arrest. Uh, there was nothing they could have done at that point in time so I walked into the plane and I've I'm I am currently outside of China <laughs> no well it is true that I'm outside of China I'm currently in Paris um, they let me go now it's time for me to tell you the truth about China all the dirty secrets I kept inside I'm gonna go dark. <laughs> no. This is, might be a surprise to some of you, it might not be to some other of, of, of some, some, some others, but um, I have an opportunity uh, to handle some personal things in the United States. Um, I, I have been uh, away from home since I left in March, just after the pandemic uh, started, uh, and, and just before China blocked transit into China from, uh, from America. And so I've been in China ever since. And um, I had this impression that, that the virus, uh, the pandemic was not gonna be as long as it has been. And uh, it's sort of, it's gone longer. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys, how long you guys have watched me, but, but my primary purpose in life has been to travel around the world. And although I've been able to travel around China and enjoy China for, for its, you know, really unique places, it's awesome people, it's interesting culture, it still is, it's just one country out of so many in this world. And one of the positives of China is that they have this very serious, uh, very serious, you know, closure, where if you leave China, you can't get back very easily. 
but if you stay in China, you're very safe. You know, they stomp out any sort of um, outbreak fairly quickly. They have robust systems, and they have a cooperative. Uh, they have a cooperative populace that is listening to, you know, listening to what the, the government is saying. And so you have this really nice, comfortable life inside China, but it is contained within China. And if you were to want to explore the world a little bit more, it's sort of like an exclusive club that once you're out, they don't stamp your hand to come back in again. You know, you're, you're kind of on your own. America on the other side, um, where, where my passport's from, I'm American, there's a lot more risk. Um, there's a lot more ignorance with regards to the, the virus and how to behave around it. And there's l much, much less unity with regards to the populace coming together. At least that's my impression. Um, but once you're outside, America has certain avenues that you can travel to and from places. And so I have some personal things to take care of in my hometown in Detroit, but I also have opportunities to travel to some, some other places that I have on my world tour list. And uh, a few months ago, actually, I was talking to a friend of mine, Matt Frazier, who, who's a backpacker. He actually visited me in uh, Mount Everest before I climbed Everest. He also, uh, he and I explored the largest cave in the world in Vietnam. And he's a real good friend of mine. He lives in Las Vegas. And uh, I was just talking to him a few months ago and he said that um, Egypt is open to travel from America. And Egypt is a place I'd really like to visit. And he wants to do scuba diving. He and I both have a passion for scuba diving and he wanted to do some scuba diving on the Red Sea. And so I, uh, I was like, man, I'd love to do that. Do like a two-week live aboard on a yacht in the, in, the, in the Red Sea. He also said that uh, he wanted to go see the Cairo Museum when it opens up. Now, the Cairo Museum is supposed to be one of the most amazing museums um, in the world. Matt is very similar-minded to me, and we're not really big museum people. But hearing Matt so excited about that museum made me excited. Uh, because if he's excited about a museum, he's like, listen, Matt, this is like, he's Matt, I'm Matt. It's going to be confusing when I talk about him. But <laughs> uh, he said, Matt, you, you, you don't know how amazing this, this place is. I want to see it when it opens. And it's going to open in October, September, October. And I said, wow, man, I'd really like to, I'd like to do that with you. But it requires exiting China if I do. Now, there's another story that came up from my friend Jim. You guys know Jim if you watch my videos. He's, the, he's a photographer with that really, really amazing old classic antique camera. And uh, he went to Iceland. And I started, you know, he, he's American and he's able to travel to Iceland. And I started thinking about the possibilities of traveling. And the, the, the fact that here in China, I get to travel all over China, but if I was to take a step out, take that risk, um, it would also afford me some reward, which would mean that I could travel more. If I didn't have this desire to world travel like I do, I would, I would be in China right now. I wouldn't be, uh, the house, housekeeping things that I'm doing back in Detroit wouldn't be so, uh, momentous that it would be like I got to get out but it's this idea that I can kind of have a bit more freedom to travel around the world I don't think the pandemic is going to release cross-border travel in that region that in Asia around uh, as much uh, in the next year or two um, you know crossing between Malaysia Singapore Indonesia Australia New Zealand and then you know um, India and all of these, these are the next few countries on my world cycle tour. I don't think those countries are going to be simplifying their cross land border uh, travel. So I have to, I, I was posing myself a question. How long do I want to pause my journey? You know, and I, it's so, the questions come up and it's like, when? At one point in time, how long am I willing to wait before I start doing my world travel journey, which is the thing that's, you know, I've been working on for almost a decade. And so, um, I figured 
it's time to take a step. I've been in China now for over a year, steady. I've seen a lot of interesting things, and that's another interesting thing. I've been in China for such a long time. I've traveled to a lot of interesting places that you guys have seen. I'm not sure when I'm going to publish this video, but I think I'm going to, I'm going to work on publishing all my old content before you see this. But um, I have this interesting perspective now. I, I saw America during the beginning of the pandemic. I saw China during the very beginning of the pandemic, like beginning, before it even was a pandemic. Then I spent a year in China seeing China's uh, um, uh, systems evolve. And now um, I've also developed sort of a, I'm just going to give it to you straight, guys. I've just, I've had this perception of the West in this, in this sort of sour light. And, and I'm, I have nerves and I'm a little bit scared. I, I have people that, that, that uh, I feel like hate me unjust, unjustly. They, they, they have this, this sort of anger towards anybody that has anything good to say about China. And, and especially when I relate it to America and I try to pose these, I've always tried to pose these kind of things as, look what China is doing right. Look at what America is doing wrong. Maybe we can learn from these things. But some people don't take it as that. They don't absorb the nuance and they just want to um, get angry at me. So I'm, I'm wondering, over time I've developed this like, wow, maybe I've de developed this like Ch China attitude that's too positive. And maybe I've developed this, this Western attitude that's it's too negative. And maybe um, by me going to America right now, while the Delta variant is, is kind of creeping up and Maybe this is an opportunity for me to tell a more colored story with a more um, fair and balanced perspective. I certainly have the perspective of China down pretty well. I don't see China's systems changing much. They, they have the system down. I know if the Delta variant does creep up like it seems to be doing in China for, a, for another outbreak, that their systems are going to clamp it down pretty good. But it might be interesting to see it in, in, in America now. You must have a lot of questions. If you do, you can put them in the comment section below. But one of them might be the vaccine. I am currently unvaccinated. I could have had the Chinese vaccine pretty easily, very easily. It's very easy to get in in China. But I decided not to get it because my friend Jim, when he traveled to Iceland, he has a Chinese vaccine. And he said, when I say the yellow border that you guys don't understand, it's a QR code on our phone. When you get the Chinese vaccine, you get this yellow border around it. Sorry about this sun line. It's kind of, kind of interesting, right? It gives me this kind of half two-faced <laughs> look when the, when, the, when, the, when the sun comes up over the, the clouds. Maybe it'll look better, but um, the, you get this yellow border around your QR code on your phone. And in Asia, everybody understands, but my friend, Jim was in, in flying into Iceland and he says it was just hours of hassle. People not understanding if you were vaccinated, how you're vaccinated and everything. So I, um, I actually decided that I'm not going to get the vaccine in China. I'm going to get the vaccine as soon as I arrive to America. So as soon as I get there, uh, I have a lot of medical professionals in my family. I'm going to have them help me and direct me to the best possible place. And I'm just going to get a, get a vaccine when I get home. Um, and then, and then when I do want to travel around, I'll have an opportunity to do that a little bit more freely, at least Western world. And I think that a lot of places in the West are going to open up, especially places that surround America or surround United States of America. And, um, it'll afford me an opportunity to continue moving around to different countries. Um, and, and actually kind of exploring the world a little bit like I wanted to. So, um, question about the vaccine, that's what I'm, what I'm doing. The, 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 the game plan, I'm going to fly into Detroit, handle some things for a little while, and then I'm going to buy an SUV or, or a vehicle, and I'm going to drive to uh, Las Vegas, where my friend Matt lives, and he has an extra spare bedroom. I'm going to move in with him. And uh, along the same timeline, tandem to all of this, I'm going to have my trike shipped from Kuala Lumpur. Now the sun's... <laughs> this was like the worst spot to do this. I thought it was going to be nice when the clouds are there. All right, if the clouds come over, then, then this light here on my shoulder will, will dim and my face will look better. Maybe I can move the camera like this. That's too bright. That's better. Maybe I'll shift the seat over.
That's better. That's much better. It's not as not as dramatic. Although this could be dramatic, right? My escape from China. So um, I'm gonna live with uh, live with Matt for a while. Um, I'm gonna put a rack on top of the of of the SUV, and I'm gonna get my trike shipped from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, to Las Vegas or Detroit, depending on. If I can fly it, maybe I can fly it direct to Detroit, but it's pretty expensive, along with all my gear. So the tour, as it's currently happened, had me riding from uh, Ningbo, China, up Japan, Korea, or Korea, Japan, Taiwan, back to mainland China, then Vietnam, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, Malaysia. So that has been my world tour so far, but there's a lot of countries that I planned to continue. I mean, it's supposed to wrap all the way around the world. So what I think I'm going to do, seeing as though this pandemic isn't going to free up travel the way that I, I intend to travel for a while, I want to re reverse the tour, switch it around. So instead of going from China all the way to the United States, I'm going to switch it. I'm going to go from the United States or Alaska, the top of North America, all the way and then end up heading to meet the place I stopped in Kuala Lumpur. Um, what this will do is, is it will allow me to start moving. So I can ship the trike, take whatever time, and then next sp spring, late spring, I can start cycling from the Bering Strait or the northern part of Alaska. I haven't figured it out yet. And then just start working my way through Alaska, then Canada, because I think the, the border crossings between Canada and America should be you know, by, by next spring should be good. Start weaving my way through the countries, explore Canada, explore the United States, cycling through those, those places. And, and those, that, that, that can take a long time. I can, I can enjoy those tr tours as, as long as it takes while South America and Central America like ease up. I can even move myself into Mexico and then weave my way down into Mexico and uh, some of the Central American countries. I can also visit some of the people that have supported me in America for so long. Uh, that or I want to get to Oregon. I figure um, I, can, I can do some interesting travels. I can go to uh, Egypt with Matt. I can go to, uh, maybe I can take the trike to Iceland and cycle around Iceland, which is a very kind of out of the way place that even on the tour, it took like a lot to get there and get back. Whereas now, Maybe I can make some allowances and do some of these interesting side tours and actually start ticking places off the list on the way. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very excited about this. This is a, a great opportunity that, that I'm taking and uh, not without a lot of, you know, serious contemplation and stuff. But I think that, you know, this is the way my life had always intended to go and it's and it was just stunted by the pandemic. And so I think that this is an opportunity for me to get back on the road. Um, as far as the opinion I have about China, I feel like maybe I can reverse that now and actually have a, a, an opinion about China from the West. And maybe I can talk about issues that I see and, and um, from the Western side, as opposed to being in China and talking about the relationship from China, like uh, my friend Cyrus Chanson does, or, or there's some other YouTubers who are who talk about Chinese issues, but from outside. I have a huge platform here, in, well, there in China. I'm not, I can't say here in China anymore. That's kind of weird. I'm officially out, but I have a lot of um, audience. I have over a million subscribers who who enjoy my content. So I'm going to continue to try to uh, be a voice, uh, a more balanced voice than some of the people in the West that talk about China, especially, you know, you know, what I'm talking about. So maybe I can, I can be a bit more um, nuanced on that. My nuanced channel is going to continue to go as well. Um, um, but I feel like I have some pieces of, of a puzzle that I can move around now. I, um, and um, if you're wondering about family, uh, you know, that was a very difficult decision, you know, that was a very difficult decision because once I leave China, I'm not going to be able to go back for a long time. Uh, me and Annie have both been supportive in explaining it to Eva and Eva is not, you know, she's, she's sad. She says she's going to miss me, but she also says that she'd like to send me video clips and show, you know, that I can add to my vlog. So every so often you might have a cameo 
from uh, from Eva at the end of some of my some of my episodes, and we're just going to play it by ear and see how it goes. I I, I think that. She's known me as a father that's always been a traveler and you know as she grows the last year has been you know has been a real opportunity for her to bond with her dad and so this was a real gift for me and her to bond from you know her age four to age five and uh, I was supposed to be traveling and only coming back every few months to see her you know so this was like a real awesome opportunity for me to bond and and grow in China and learn a little bit more about China and have a little bit more of a nuanced perspective of, of that part of the world. If you guys realize what time I'm recording this, I haven't posted much video content on my, on my channel for a long time. And I just, I'm, I'm sure there are many people like this out there, especially during this pandemic period, where their life sort of derailed from their original passion that they had. You know, if, they're, if you were living the life of your dreams before the pandemic and somehow the pandemic shuffled those cards and opportunities you might have fallen into a bit of a depression or or lost a spark and uh, i'm hoping that i can rekindle a spark that i feel has 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 been lost and so um yeah i'm i'm right now i'm a, i'm a i'm a cauldron of emotions and i'm I, i'm apprehensive i'm excited i'm i'm, I'm hopeful I'm, I'm sad, I, I, uh, you know, in, in many ways, all these motions uh, combining together, but I'm, I'm also confident in the decision to do this and excited about the future. And I, I'm feeling that um, the opportunities in front of me outside of China at this point um, are big. So I'm excited about sharing it with you. Um, there's going to be some big moves here on the on the map on the website. There's some new things coming out. I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus intently on content creation uh, above uh, above a lot, especially in the next coming months. Which you're you're already going to see the fruits of that labor, hopefully. And uh, yeah, just rekindle that spark. Do some of the things that I kind of needed to house housekeeping things with my personal life. Um, when I'm in Detroit, so I'll get those off my off my shoulders as far as stressors. Sometimes you you live in China, and then you know things simple things like doing taxes or or like doing certain things get confusing and muddled. And and, and going to Detroit and sitting down and just saying, let's handle these things, is going to be very very um, relieving for me to do, and let me focus more on the things I want to focus on. So. You guys have been with me through a lot, if you've been with me from the beginning. And uh, I know that this road has been not quite the road a lot of you intended when you originally subscribed to me. And, you know, that's life, you know. Uh, part of life is, is the, uh, the, the bumps along the way. And I'll tell you what, I am so glad I've had this channel. Because if I was to try to tell this story to my grandkids, or if I was to try to encompass my life and where my thoughts and ideas and where my perspective comes from it'd be very hard because there's so many twists and turns and 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 and, and a lot of twists and turns you've never heard about you know but but the ones that you have heard about are you know you've seen them in in, in moving picture shows you know choreographed and 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 well-spoken stories hopefully and um now we're going to the next phase. We're opening in the next chapter and and if you have been following along you, You'll come to appreciate that in another new way. So I'm kind of excited about that as well Anyways, my layover here is quite long. Uh, I still have four more hours. So I'm gonna open a laptop start editing and uh, Wait for the flight to Detroit My sister's meeting me at the airport. I wanted to do like more like live stream stuff um, like, you know, hey, I'm at the airport and blah, 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 but I'm nervous. I've gotten a lot of threats from people who are very judgmental and uh, I don't want to have somebody waiting at the airport with a, <laughs> with a shotgun or something. And I'm hoping in all honesty that all of my apprehension on that side is, is totally unfounded. And uh, I think it is, but I'd rather not chance it. So I want to go to America, settle in, and then trickle out the idea that I'm not in China anymore um, on, its own, on its own. And then hopefully, like I said, I can, I can actually 
talk about um, you know where where my ideas were and where they've evolved to. So by the time uh, by the time I publish this video, I should have a much more nuanced and, and better grasp of America as it is it exists today to give you uh, an opinion about it. Because right now, all I all my opinion of America is from some fucked up comments on my YouTube comments and from news and from friends and family who provide me with a kind of a scary perspective of America. Some of them a very benign perspective. Matt, you got nothing to worry about, but there's also some some worry there. And I'd like to see it for myself. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, what else? If you have any questions about this, this is a pretty big thing, you know. Um, you let me know. I don't think that my trike is going to make it to the United States for a few months. So I do have to get some SUV. I think I might do some road trips. I might visit some people that that I'd like to visit and uh, make some big, big intensive focus moves on how the Jayo is structured, how Nuance is structured, focus more on my Patreon. And uh, being outside the great firewall is gonna make life a little easier. I'm even here in Paris and it's so easy for me to do things that used to have like this like VPN. Oh, the VPN doesn't work today. Looks like you're gonna have trouble. Or the VPN doesn't work on mobile or it only works on this, you know. Real, real frustrating China problems, you know. But uh, yeah, my, my perspective on China won't change, but I'll continue to share it. I know I made a video a while back on my nuance about how like, if I was kicked out of China, I, would I continue talking about China? And listen, I'm not kicked out of China. I'm just literally just wanting to continue my original plan. But I will not stop talking about what my opinion of China is with regards to certain things because I do think it's important. And I do think that uh, there's a lot of issues that are being misconstrued. And if I can add a little bit of clarity or nuance to those, I will continue to do so. So I hope you're doing well. Tell me what you think. You think it was dumb? I'm a bit nervous too, because um, when I get to the States, I'm, I'm unvaccinated. I, I, I'm at a risk. Um, America has, it's, it's, it's a, it's a it's, 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 there's a lot of risks to going and leaving this safety of China and venturing out into the West. Um, it wasn't a decision I made lightly, that's for sure. But uh, life's in a journey, you know, life's a journey. I've got some, I got, I got some big goals and I want to start accomplishing those goals. I also feel like my body is aging and I don't, I don't want to lose these really, really important years of my life. I'm 42, 41, 42. Jeez, I don't even know. <laughs> Once you get past 40, it doesn't matter anyways. I'm, I'm in my 40s. And the, the, we have, we have a, a mileage on this, on this shell that we carry around, you know? And this consciousness machine. Uh, and I, I, I want to use it to its fullest extent and I don't want to, I don't want to waste it. So, um, anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for following me. We got a big, we got a lot going on. We got some good stuff coming up. Good stuff. Jaiyo.